as usual. I already forgot what page. 28. So this is going on page 28 when we are done. There's not a little spot for it, so just write it at the top so you don't forget, because I'll forget at the end. Um, so let's talk paired functions, all right? These are not brand new to you. Don't even try and t tell me that they are, because they're not, all right? I know you've seen them before. I know you've talked about them as parent functions, okay? So, and you still, and they're important, okay? Tr when I say those kinds of things, I know you don't know me very well yet. You don't know if you can trust me, if I won't lie to you about things. I'm not gonna lie to you about math. I'm not gonna make you do things you don't need just for a reason of for doing it, okay? Um, these are things that we're, I'm still talking about in my calculus class. There was something we were doing with, it doesn't even matter because you would understand at this point, and that's fine, but they had to know what the parent function of a log graph looked like. And if you didn't know that, you couldn't do anything else. And that is not a calculus skill. That's a prerequisite skill, just knowing the shape and where the intersection is. Very basic. We didn't have to do a crazy graph and plot a bunch of points. Just a quick little sketch. Knowing that, boom, we could answer the question. If we don't know that, we're stuck. Okay, and that's going to happen to us and some things as well. You know these. They're not that hard. Make sure you got them down. Okay? So, parent functions. A function family is a group of functions with similar characteristics. You have similar characteristics to your biological family. That's the way it works, right? Um, the parent function is the simplest of the functions in a family. Don't go home and tell your parents that they're the simplest ones, okay? Um, you must, must be able to recognize each of these functions along with their characteristics. So not just, hey, that's a line, but you got to know stuff about it, okay? Now, we're going to treat the line like we treat the rest of the parent functions as far as the little extra stuff, but I am aware there is, there's a ton of ways to graph a line. I'm not saying we have to change the way we're graphing a line. I'm going to graph a line using um, a point and some slope, whether it's the intercept or whatever. That's the easiest way. Transformations is not the easiest way, but we're still going <clears> to <throat> talk about the pieces that would allow us to. Because in case you didn't know it, just like when you were transforming um, quadratics, you can take a line and the parent function and transform it the exact same way. And that's basically what, you know, slope intercepts doing anyway. All right, so for each parent function, you have to know the name, you have to know the graph, and you have to know the equation, right? If I give you one, you have to know the other two on all of them. Um, so we're going to start with linear, which is just a line, and that is f of x equals x. That's the parent function, and it's, I would say, the easiest of all of the parent functions. Then we're going to look at what's called anchor points, all right? And these are, and we'll abbreviate these, we have to write them down places as AP. That means anchor points, so we don't have to write it out every time. And we won't actually, you won't, won't actually write them down in a T table like we're doing right here most of the time. There are times when we will because we need to. We are going to do it on here so I can make sure you understand what they are. They are super simple. They are, they could really be any points you wanted them to be on the graph, but I think the easiest ones make the most sense. If there's a zero, zero, I'm going to use a zero, zero, because that's pretty easy. And then one, one, and negative one, negative one. Now, you only have to have two points to graph a line, but we're going to use three anchor points so we know it's not something else, and we'll look at that as well. So my anchor points here, I have negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And I'll show you how we're going to use those at the end. Right now, we just kind of need to know what they are. Okay. So then we have this. What is the domain of a linear parent function? All real numbers, but we're going to write everything in interval notation. Like I've said 5 million times, and I still get inequality stuff. Interval notation negative infinity to infinity. What's my range? Very good. Negative infinity to infinity. Do I have any x-intercepts? Yes, I have one. It's 0, 0. And if one of your x-intercepts is 0, 0, your y-intercept has to be 0, 0. Extrema. Do I have any maximum or minimum points? No, I do not. So this is a none. Is this function increasing anywhere? Yes. Where do I start increasing? Negative infinity. Where do I finish increasing? Infinity, which means I never really finish, right? But um, there we go. This is, so it's negative infinity to infinity. 
And then that means there are none for the decreasing intervals. Okay. We good? All right. End behavior, like what we just did. We have to write this out. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches what? Infinity. Good. And then, and I know that you might have to write kind of small in here because it's not long enough. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches what? Negative infinity. Okay. We good? All right. Do we have any discontinuities? Nope. There's none. Is it even or odd or neither? Odd, because why? Because it has what kind of symmetry? Origin symmetry. Okay, good. And we can test it algebraically. So let's test it algebraically like we did yesterday. F of negative x would equal negative x. And there's really no simplifying there. Um, this means that F of negative x equals negative F of x. And that is also what makes it odd. Okay? Just what we did yesterday. We need to be able to do it graphically by looking at it and then also by um, algebraically. Okay. So let's look at this next one. Absolute value. My parent function for absolute value is f of x equals the absolute value of x. So the anchor points, 0, 0, 1, 1. But that's not enough because I got another side of this. I also need this one. But I don't need any more than that because if I know it's absolute value, then I can just draw, you know, a part of a line through each one of those. And so that my anchor points are negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. Okay? And I know I will have some people say, how am I supposed to remember what my anchor points are? It's not a math. Not, we're not writing these down so you can go home and memorize them. It's absolute value. Think about what the basic sketch looks like, and these should make sense. Absolute value of 0 is 0. 1 is 1. Negative 1 is 1. And, I mean, that's where they are. It just goes with the function. Okay? We okay with that? All right. So my domain here, what's my domain? Negative infinity to infinity. What's my range? Where do I start? 0. And I go to infinity. I never include infinity. Do I include 0? Yes. If you're unsure, you ask yourself, is zero a y value on my graph? The answer is yes. It's enclosed. Okay. Least to greatest always. You always, always write your intervals least to greatest. Left to right, bottom to top. Writing infinity to zero makes absolutely no sense. Okay. We good on that? Think of a number line. Just the way it works. All right. My <coughs> x-intercept, zero, zero. Y-intercept is also Zero, zero. Do I have any extrema here? Yes. What would it be called? What's the best name for it? Absolute minimum. Bless you. And it is where? Zero, zero. Okay. Am I increasing anywhere? Yes. Where do I start increasing? Zero. And I keep going to infinity. These are both open because we're going to do our increasing and decreasing with the open. The only one you have to think, is it open or closed, is with domain and range. Okay? And then decreasing, where do I start decreasing? Negative infinity to zero. And I know that these open intervals and ordered pairs look very, very similar. They do because they both just end with parentheses. But you have to know the difference. You're not going to give an intercept as a... Um, as an interval, that would make any sense. And you're not going to give an interval as a point. Um, so, and if I had more than one x-intercept, I wouldn't union them because they're not intervals, right? It's just a list of them where you just put commas. All right, so my end behavior, as x, no, it always starts the same way. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches what? Infinity, good. And then as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches infinity. Do I have any discontinuities? Nope. None. Even or odd? Even. Why? 
Good. Well, the what one? The y-axis is good. It has y-axis symmetry. So let's look at it algebraically. If I do f of negative x, that's equal to the absolute value of negative x. The absolute value of negative x is just the absolute value of x. So f of negative x equals f of x, and that's what makes it even. Okay? Questions on that? No. Okay, close your tablet back there. I didn't realize it was open. All right. So let's look at the quadratic. Don't even try and tell me you hadn't done quadratics because I know that's not true. We got f of x equals x squared. Okay? This one's wrong. Um, all right, so my anchor points. Zero, I've got a zero, zero, so I'm going to use zero, zero. Okay? I got a one, one and a negative one, negative one. But aren't those the exact three that I just used for absolute value? Yes, so if I do that, I, if I know it's a parabola, yeah, I can make it curvy, but we want to get, you know, there's a difference between sketching something and graphing something. So right now we're going to try and graph them. We want them to be, you know, semi-accurate. I mean, not, you know, 100% accurate, but semi-accurate. Um, so, yeah, I need, yeah, negative 2, 4 works, and 2, 4 works. So on this one, I'm going to have 5. You either, you either have 3 or you have 5, basically. And again, these aren't crazy hard to remember which ones they are. I mean, 1, 2 squared is 4. That's how you know where it is. There's no magic in remembering or understanding it. And I did not make this line long enough because we have more. So we have negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. Those are your anchor points. Domain, negative infinity to infinity. Mm -hmm. Range, zero to infinity. Do I include zero? Yes. X-intercept and y-intercept, zero, zero again. A lot of these um, parent functions have a lot of the same characteristics. So, Do I have any extrema? Yes. What do I have? Absolute minimum. And it is at zero. Am I increasing anywhere? Yes, from zero to infinity. And I'm decreasing from negative infinity to zero, least to greatest. Okay. In behavior, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches what? Infinity, and then as x, approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches infinity. Do we have any discontinuities? No. Is this even or odd? Even. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Are we saying that it's even because this is even? No. Why are we saying that it's even? Okay, yes, up, up. Okay. Well, no, that's, that's not it either. It's because it has y-axis symmetry. We would know the degree is even because it's up, up. Remember, those are, those are two different things. Now, if this is even, this is not going to be odd. It's either going to be even or it's going to be neither, right? Because it's up, up or down, down. Um, just because it's up, up or down, down doesn't necessarily mean it's symmetric with the y-axis. Does that make sense to you? The degree would be even, but then we have to check the rest. Okay, so now let's do this algebraically. f of negative x is equal to negative x squared, which is equal to just x squared. So that means that f of negative x is equal to f of x, and that is another reason we can say it's even. Like if we didn't have a graph, that's what we would do. Now look at the characteristics. So all this stuff is the characteristics, stuff that you need to know about it that's going to help you graph things. Let, um, compare this, what we just did with the quadratic, to what you have an absolute value. What do you notice? It's exactly the same. The only difference is your anchor points, but all the characteristics are the same. Because they're, they're kind of similar graphs, right? All right, any questions on the front? Okie dokie. So let's move on to the back then. All right. Cubic. Well, f of x equals x cubed, because that's what cubic means, right? And I have 0, 0, 
1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. Well, those are the exact three points that we use for, a, for linear, which if you know it's not linear, again, you should be able to know to do this shape, but we want to get it as accurate as we can, so we need two more. We're going to have to have five here as well. Ne oh, close. Eight. Negative two, negative eight, and two, eight, which don't fit on this graph, but that, so we're not going to plot them, but we'll write them down, and I didn't make this long enough again. So I've got negative 2, negative 8, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 8. Okay? We good? All right. So then our domain, negative infinity to infinity, right? What's our range? Negative infinity to infinity. Very good. X-intercept and Y-intercept. This gets very boring because it's all the same. All these zero, zero. But that's all because they haven't been translated away from the origin yet. All right, so my ex this extrema blank, my intention for this blank that I keep forgetting to change was not to have the word extrema there, which has worked out fine for us, but I wanted it to be all inclusive, so I really wanted this to say critical points is a point of inflection, right? Um, Oh, that's a two cross right there. Okay. Because I don't, I, do I have any max or mins here? No, but I do have this. And what's it called? Point of inflection. So this is, and abbreviations are fine. Point of, as long as you add the L in there, because I want you to know it's inflection and not infection. Um, and that's a zero, zero. Just a little wiggle in the graph. Is this graph increasing anywhere? Yes, where? What's happening starting at negative? What's happening here? Is this increasing? So remember, your max and your mins change your graph from increasing to de decreasing and vice versa. It changes the direction. A point of inflection only changes the shape. So look what we're doing here. We're increasing pretty quickly. We're still increasing, but we slow down and then we speed back up, but it's actually increasing the whole time. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's increasing from negative infinity to infinity. Do what? Oh. <laughs> um, decreasing, it's, there's none. So end behavior, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. Then as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. Any questions at all? Do we have, <coughs> excuse me, do we have any discontinuities? No. Is this even, odd, or neither? Odd. Why? Origin symmetry, very good. Now let's check it algebraically, make sure we're right. We're right, but negative, f of negative x equals negative x cubed. Well, negative x cubed is negative x cubed. So that means that f of negative x equals negative f of x, and algebraically, that's why it's odd, because we gotta be able to do both. We know before we, before we, even if I didn't see any of the middle right here, if this was all covered up, and before we do anything algebraic, we know the degree is odd because the ends are opposite, right? So the degree is definitely odd, but then we have to either look at the graph or do this to figure out if the graph itself is odd. Okay, that makes sense. The degree and the graph are, but again, you wouldn't have this be odd and this be even. That doesn't make any sense. They'd have to match, but this doesn't necessarily have to be one of the, have to be the same. Okay. Square root. So we got, now, I know you've talked about inverses also. So the square root function is actually partially the inverse of a quadratic. So the quadrat, partially, yes, because look what happens. Here's a quadratic, like I'd have a parabola, right? So picture that parabola there. When you have that and you um, have an inverse, you reflect it in the line y equals x. So it, it turns it into one of the uh, parabolas that are like laying down. The problem is those aren't functions, right? 
It, it fails the vertical line test. That's why it's partially the inverse, because we only use this part so we can use it as a function. Does that make sense? And that's why when you take the square root of something, you have to put plus or minus, because you have to have the positive side and the negative side. The parent function here is just the square root of x. It's not plus or minus, or I would get this part too, and then it wouldn't be a function. Okay? So there's your square root function. Anchor points. 0, 0, 1, 1, totally easy. Do I want to use 2 as an x value? Because do you know what the exact decimal of the square root of 2 is? No, nobody does because it goes on for infinity, and I don't want you guessing on a graph. So I'd like another pretty point. What's the next x value that's going to help me? 4. 4, 2. So I've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. And again, I know I will have some people, I just get so confused. I don't know how I'm supposed to know what my anchor points are. Just think logically what makes sense. Don't overthink it. I think the people that are doing it, they're overthinking it and think they have to memorize everything. No, just what makes sense if you have a little sketch of this, okay? <clears throat> Is my domain all real numbers here? No, where do I start? Zero, and I go to infinity. Never include infinity. Do I include zero? Yes. Range, where do I start? Zero, go to infinity. Never include infinity. Do I include zero? Yes. X-intercept, Y-intercept, it's the same as all the rest there. Oh, I'm writing X. Zero, 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 zero. Okay. Extrema. Do I have any max or mins? Yes, I do. What kind? Absolute min. So I have an absolute min at zero, zero. Am I increasing anywhere? Yes. I start increasing at zero, and I go to infinity. Increasing and decreasing are always open, and it's not decreasing at all. So now let's talk about in behavior. As x approaches infinity, what does f of x approach? Infinity. So let's write that part down, then we'll talk about the rest. So as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. Are we ever actually going to get there? No, because it's infinity. It just keeps on going, right? So when I go to the left, am I actually approaching infinity at all? No, I'm stopping. So my right bound, even though it's not really a bound because I can't get there, is infinity. But I actually only go to zero here. So instead of saying as x approaches negative infinity, we're not approaching that. We're approaching zero. So as x approaches zero, f of x, what is f of x approaching? Zero. Do we ever actually get there? Yeah, we do. So when you're talking, this is a concept of limits. We haven't really used those words yet and used that notation, but it is an idea of a limit. We may never get there, or we may get there. Either way, these are the things we're approaching on the way. Okay, whether we get there or not is irrelevant. We good? Awesome. Do I have any discontinuities? No. Is it even, odd, or neither? Neither. because I don't have any of that kind of symmetry. All right, we good? All right, cube root. So f of x is equal to the cube root of x. Anchor points, I got 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. Those are the same three that I started off with for the cubic, and the only three I use for the linear but this is a totally different shape, right? This is the inverse of a cubic. So, you know, the cubic looks like this, right? When you reflect it and the line y equals x, it just lays down, just like the, the quadratic laid down. So I need another point. I don't want to use 2. What would be the next x value that would help me? 8. So I can do 8, 2, and negative 8, negative 2, right? Doesn't fit on my graph, but doesn't mean I don't need them. Once again, this is a little too short, so I'll make that longer. All right, so we've got negative 8, negative 2. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 8, 2. These are the same numbers we use for cubic, right? But the x and y switch places? Guess what? That's what happens with an inverse. x and y switch places. So it's not like you have to remember a bunch of different numbers either. All right, just a quick reminder there. That was the attendance tone. So students, please take a good student's attention attendance at this time. Also, students want to make sure that you are aware we are on social studies for our own day. You need to make sure you're checking and enriching students.
students to make sure that, that if you were drafted by your teacher, you know where to go. And if you were not, you know, make sure you signed up and speak to math time on time today. Have a good one. Okay. So, um, yeah, so let's figure out domain anyway. So our domain, negative infinity to infinity. Our range, negative infinity to infinity. X and Y intercepts, 0, 0, 0, 0. I intend, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. Um, critical points is what I wanted this to say. So, do I have any critical points? Yes, I have a what? Point of inflection. And it is at zero, zero. Okay. Am I increasing anywhere? Everywhere, right? So negative infinity to infinity, and I have none of these. Right? You go ahead and write out your end behavior. You should be able to write it out without me talking you through it. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. Right? Any discontinuities? No, none. Even or odd? Odd because it has what? Origin symmetry. All right? And then we're going to write down the algebraic. f of negative x equals the cube root of negative x. Why do you have your tablet out? Close your tablet. We are still working. Um, so this is the same thing as the cube root of negative 1 times the cube root of x. Okay, right? Because anytime you have radicals, you can multiply everything that's underneath and everything that's not. So what is the cube root of negative 1? Negative 1. So f of negative x equals negative, that's that negative 1, cube root of x. So that means that f of negative x is equal to negative f of x, and that's another reason it is odd. Okay, any questions? All right, so 